Hey guys, it's Sherry Vegas and welcome back to my channel. So today I thought I would talk about the five most common mistakes that new resin artists make. So I thought I'd share with you guys five mistakes that I made in no particular order when I was first starting out to become a resin artist and hopefully you guys will learn from my mistakes and this video will help you. So this mistake I see a lot of new resin artists doing and I get why because Pigments are expensive and resin art in general is an expensive art form. So you generally want to use um, your higher quality pigments, but they are on the more pricey side for the amount you get compared to your cheaper acrylic paints. And I have seen a few resin artists um, really like say like, oh it's fine putting acrylic paints in. And yes, you can use acrylic paints in your resin. The only reason why you want to go for your better quality pigments is because one you use less so in the long run it does work out to be a little bit cheaper because you only need to use a tiny little bit of these but they also are designed to work with your resin so they're going to work a lot better and you're not going to have the issues that you might get when you work with just a straight acrylic paint so what I found when I use just acrylic paint in my resin is one the color payoff is not that strong so I generally have to add more than what I would of this and when I add more of my acrylic paints into my resin, I either get two things. It um, will either just start to set too fast and become really gluggy because I've added just too much acrylic paint and it's not agreed with the resin, or I've just not gotten that true color that I've wanted. So I always recommend to even new artists, just get your basic colors in your pigments and build up from there because a little of this does go a long way and it works a lot better in your resin and you won't have as much trouble when you're working with your resin. So number two is additives. So a lot of new resin artists, and this is something I did in particular, was I overused additives and then my artworks just wouldn't set because um, I had diluted the resin too much. So I like to use alcohol, I've got Resi Blast, acetone, art oil, they're all great to add in and you get such cool effects when you do use them in your artwork but I find that new artists um, are really heavy handed on these and it will actually stop your resin from setting. So your resin needs the resin plus the hardener and you mix that together and then that creates the chemical reaction to make it set. But then when you add in other chemicals like these additives, um, that can dilute the, the whole process and stop it from setting. Sorry, my phone is going off. I should have put that on silent. Um, and so you'll either get two things that your resin just will never set. So if your resin, it, if it doesn't set within that 24 hour period, it will just never set. And then you also might get the little like divots um, in your artwork and that is not fun. You can get rid of them, but it's not fun. Um, so that would be my number two is less is more with your additives. So number three is not checking the temperature of your workspace. So if resin is too cold or too hot, it will either um, start to set too fast or it will be really hard to work with. So you ideally want it to be at 60, sort of late 60s to 72 Fahrenheit and around 23 to around 26 Celsius. Hold on, let me check that. 23, yep, to 25 Celsius. Um, so that's basically like quite nice room temperature. I have done this a lot because it is in Australia and my new studio space does not have air conditioning. So I either have to work really early in the morning or really late at night in summer just because during the middle of the day, my studio heats up so much that it's too hot. Yes, I am going to get air conditioning. Um, but... I've tried working with resin during the middle of the day in an Australian summer and it's a no-go. It starts to set so fast, I can barely work it. It starts to set like while I'm mixing it. So definitely make sure you check your room temperature or pick the right time of day to work when you are working with your resin. When you first start working with your boards, you tend to want to use quite a lot of resin because you feel like you need to. What I would recommend is taping around your board and then just using a little bit at a time and really making that resin go across your surface of your board. I teach resin workshops and a lot of the time the students just want to keep loading and loading resin on and then as soon as they take the tape off, 
it all just pours off the sides. Um, so make sure you go and check out resin calculators for the size of your board and that way you only use what you actually need to use. But when you're a new artist and you're working with a new medium, you tend to want to overuse the product. But then what you have happen is most of it just drips off the side and you've got a lot of waste. So just go and check out resin calculators, they're on most um, places that sell resin and you can work out how much you need for the size of board you need. And once you get more used to it, then you stop using the calculators because you can kind of just know by eye. So my last piece of advice to you guys to make sure you become a better artist and don't do the same mistakes that I've done in the past is make sure your tabletop and your board is level. So go and get yourself one of those little doobie wacky things. What, leveler? Are they called levelers or the, the little liquidy stuff in it? Or the app that you can get on your phone, but I think the one you get from the hardware shop is much more accurate. Because I've always looked, I've done this before when I've been lazy and I've gone, oh yeah, that table looks fine. Put my cups up and down, my board, and then I've noticed like when I've come back, half of my resin is like sliding off my board in one direction because it's just that little bit out. So don't think that you can just eyeball it and be like, yeah, that looks even. Make sure you always check the level of your table and your board before you start your pour. Thank you guys so much for watching that. If you have any other mistakes that you guys have made in the past, feel free to leave it in the comment box below so others can have a look. And if you like this video, make sure you give it a big thumbs up because it really does help me out knowing what content to make you guys. And if you don't follow me already, go and follow me on my other social medias as I post different things that you don't get to see here. And I also have all of my workshop dates on my website.